Hi everyone, I'm Alex here at the Manitoba Museum. I'm in the middle of our Strike 1919 exhibit. So I hope you'll join me. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Winnipeg General Strike. In 1919, up to 35,000 workers walked off of their jobs. Um, they were looking for better pay, safer working conditions, and also a recognition of their unions, of their bargaining agents. And I'm actually standing in front of the only surviving video of this strike, which is really fascinating to see. So I hope you'll all come along with me as I lead you into some of the different buildings and events of the strike. So here I am in 1919 Winnipeg, standing in front of Old City Hall. And of course, there's a pretty big event happening in Winnipeg 1919, which is the general strike. 35,000 workers have walked off of their jobs. And we see a few different protest signs behind me, some for the strike, some against. But one of the most interesting here is this one. It says, down with Bolshevism. Now, of course, two years earlier, another major world event had happened, which was the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, which overthrew the previous czarist government. And this led to a very real fear throughout the world that Bolshevism, that communism, would spread like a domino effect. And so strikers here in Winnipeg who had walked off of the jobs, many of them were accused of being Bolsheviks, of being people who had come from Eastern Europe and brought this ideology with them. Now, this was kind of the fake news of the day. The fact is, most strikers were British or Canadian born. So lots of businesses are closed, but behind me, this place here is open. Strathcona Restaurant really was in this location 100 years ago. If we could step into a time machine, we'd actually be standing right in the middle of it. And during the strike, it became known as the Labour Cafe. So of course, we've shrunk down the restaurant to fit inside of our museum galleries. In reality, it was quite a bit larger than this. Um, but it became a really significant location during the strike. The reason for that was that it was set up as a free cafe, a labour cafe for people who were on strike. Women in particular. Now, women at this time made up about a quarter of Winnipeg's workforce, but often weren't being paid the same as men were. So during the strike, of course, everyone was struggling, struggling to feed themselves and their families, but women were struggling in particular because their wages tended to be lower, they tended to have less in savings. So a woman by the name of Helen Armstrong, who was a noted lead, labor leader, really kind of ferocious, generous, and amazing woman, set up this cafe to feed those women. Um, it served over 1,500 meals every single day. I wanted to show you a few little secrets here in our pharmacy. Now, this is one of my favorite spots in our museum, um, partly because there are literally hundreds of objects in here for you to explore. So I want to show you a few of my favorites that are kind of hiding in plain sight. Um, the first, if we look down here on the shelf, of course, we've got lots of medicines for people. But down here, we've actually got a few for animals as well. And this is my absolute favorite, hog onic. This is apparently a good general tonic for hogs. Um, of course, Winnipeg at this point, it's booming, it's growing, but still kind of a rural community. Plenty of people looking to take care of their farm animals. Um, the other object that I've got just over here is one that actually I didn't notice until a visitor pointed it out to me recently, which is this kind of strange camera. Now you might notice that it's actually got two lenses. The reason for that is that this is a stereoscopic camera and it's used to take photos for a stereoscope just like this. This works exactly like a Viewmaster. You take two identical photos, but just a couple of inches apart. And when you look through, your eyes combine them and it looks three dimensional. Now, my last object that I wanna show you here is hidden kind of under the counter. Maybe you'd have to ask for it specially. You might notice that this bottle looks an awful lot like a bottle of wine. The reason for that is because that's exactly what it is. Between 1916 and 1923, when, um, Manitoba was under prohibition. Now, believe it or not, we actually voted for it. It was passed by popular referendum, but that doesn't mean that everyone loved it. And so if you wanted to kind of get around that, a little loophole was your doctor could actually prescribe a bottle of wine to you. I'm standing in front of the Allen Theatre. This actually still exists today. Nowadays we call it the Met and of course it's still open. But believe it or not, Winnipeg in 1919, in its boom period, was actually a center of vaudeville. Numerous uh, famous players, famous actors came here. People like Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, even Harry Houdini came here to Winnipeg to perform at places like the Allen Theatre 
and uh, the Pantages Playhouse, which of course is also right across the street from the museum. All right, thanks for tuning in.